I'm going to continue off from the last video explaining why the second trigger isn't happening and why our protagonist mannequin isn't going back to the running state after he jumps and lands on the ground. This is related to the distance parameter from the first crowd trigger that we had set up in the previous video. Basic concept number 6b, more crowd triggers. This is how close the agent needs to be in order to trigger this, the first crowd trigger. So this is, by default, it's set to 1. And let's just play the animation. So this is where the agent starts triggering um, uh, the jump. This is how close you got to be. And you can see that there's a bit of foot sliding. That's because after a bit of trial and error, I put this to 0.5. Now, why did I do that? I mean, I don't know. That that's what I ended up with at the end. I could leave it at point, uh, at 1. And to be honest, it actually works better because like I mentioned before, the smaller box was moved over just to compensate for the delay in the jump and leaving it at one, it, it makes more sense. However, I already had this set up. And then if I make those adjustments, I wouldn't have to render a different version of the smaller box. Cause as I mentioned before, this is not the box that's being rendered. If I go back, no, if I go back, this is the box that's actually being rendered. And it, it, it's not at the same position because I've moved it over to compensate for all that uh, delay and the offset position. Now I'm just going to leave it how I had it as is at 1. Uh, sorry, at, at uh, 0.5. Just because I already have it set up like that and it, and it works. Okay, going back to fixing the second trigger and activating it. So it's still not working. He's still dragging his feet and it's not switching over to our running state. After the jump, this trigger is not happening. So let's take a look why and make the geometry spreadsheet a little larger so we can actually see what we're doing. And I want to debug this. Let's expand the crowd object over here. I'm going to pull this up. And what we want to look at is the geometry over here. So click, select this geometry. You don't have to expand it out. Now, oh, okay, let me get rid of that. The point attribute, because I have the point selected over here. Remember, crowds are point. This tells us all the point attributes that are embedded into our crowd agent, our protagonist character over here. What I want to check out is the state. Why the state is not transitioning to our uh, second state, which is the running. We want him to start off running, jump over the box and back to running. Why isn't it going back to the running? Now there's a lot of stuff here, as you can see. So I'm going to come over here and we actually filter out the point attributes that we want to know. Well, I only want to know the state. So I'm going to type state, press enter, and it'll filter it out. And that's what we want to see. So let's back up a bit. Okay. I'm going to drag this with my mouse so I have more control. Jump. That's the first trigger. If you look at the state over here, it's still running. But we can see in the viewport that our agent is jumping up. So, okay, now it updates. So why is there a delay in that first trigger point? This isn't even the second trigger point. This is the first trigger point. Why is there a delay? There is, this is where the jump starts happening. I can see him getting into that stand. So 51. So 51, that's that's where that stance is happening. If I drag this over, he lands here. So that's 65. So that's like, oh, sorry, 68. That's when the state updates to jump up. So if we go back, this 66 is still running. 67 update with the jump up. So 51 and 67. What I'm trying to get at is if you go 67 minus uh, 24, you get 43. So he's actually starting, the jump up state is actually starting at 43 here. And how do I know that? <laughs> because I kind of cheated. The reason I know that is because in this trigger state, in the very first trigger here in our transition, there's actually a delay. There's a delay of one second. And one second, because in our project, we have this set up to a delay of one second is equivalent to 24 frames. That delay allows Houdini to blend between the state. Now we don't really want this to happen. I want him to jump right away, but if we jump too soon, it'll look really awkward. Like there won't be any frames to blend between the state. So what we want to do, but one is definitely too long. Tweak the state blending. This ramp here will tell us 
how do we want to transition to the next day from the running to the jump? So I want something a little bit more smooth. This is a linear step. Let's adjust the duration. It's one is way too long. So let's go something like 0.4. And I know that because I've already did this before. So me, this is based off trial and error. Again, you have to try multiple times until you find that sweet spot. So you just have to keep playing around with it. Okay, let's just play it first before I start modifying more stuff. He's actually running. Is he running? No, let me play. Okay, so it's a lot faster and the second state automatically starts off. But before I want to get to that, now that's a little awkward. It goes here because there's a, well, I guess it's okay. There's a bit of feet sliding here. So that's what I didn't like. What you can do is modify this state blend is what I wanted to show you. I'm going to add another point here. I'm going to drag it up, but I don't want it to be so straight. So what you can do is modify these into B splines, but you have to make most of them. So what I just do is make all of the B splines. And what I want to do is drag it over. So I have this little exponential ramp up. Now let's play it. Okay, so that looks a bit better to me. This is total preference. Like here, and then he jumps up. Now there's still a bit of feet sliding though. You can see here. What we can keep on doing is I'm going to slide this over. So I want him to jump faster, to transition to the jump state a little faster. Okay, so that feet sliding there, not great. So maybe I'll pull this back, pull this over here maybe. So you can see what I'm trying to get at. It requires a bit of trial and error. Now I'm not gonna make this perfect, so I'm gonna stick with this. I know there's a bit of feet sliding. There's a couple frames right there where he's sort of sliding, but we're gonna live with that for now, just because that's not the focus of this video. The duration, because now I'm gonna switch this back, the duration back to one and make it fail on the second trigger just because I want to show you why the second trigger, why the duration of the first trigger was affecting the second trigger. So let's play it again. You can see that the second trigger does not happen. He does not go back into the running state. He ends up sliding his feet forever. Now let's take a look why. I need a bit more real estate. So I'm just going to cut. I'm going to fast forward just a bit here. Okay drag this over jump because of the very that that delay in the duration of the first trigger this date is not updating it's still stuck on the running state so even when our character enters this box right here so he's entered this box our second trigger will not happen because the second trigger well the sec the trigger will happen but the transition will not the transition says that we're going from a jump up to a running. However, if you look at our current state right now, it's still a running. So even though our agent has entered the box, because of the first trigger's delay, our character is still in the running state when he's inside the box. Transition never happens. So let's change this a bit so we can test it. Let's go to the crown transition, uh, sorry, crowd trigger. And I'm going to say, instead of income, I'm going to say outgoing and see if it makes it. It's a little close though. Then he does, okay. So let's zoom out a bit. And I'm going to rewind back. So he's here and I'm going to play it. Jumps up and he starts running again. Because again, why, why is he taking so long to trigger? I mean, the box is over here, right? The box is over here and our character is like here. That's not even close, right? Well, that has that um, delay again. So let's go back to that uh, crown, second trigger crowd transition. And we have that delay again. And this is also set to one second delay. So that explains why this, this is taking so long. This character is taking so long to enter, to get back into the running state. So these delays, you got to be careful. Okay, let's change this first. Let's just go back here. And I want to change this back into incoming. So I want him to enter the running state when he enters the box. And I'm also going to adjust the delay for the first trigger. And let's do something like, as I said before, 0.4. Oh, let's do this again. That fixes our problem. Awesome.
Now let's talk about the third trigger, and that's when our main character runs up close to the small crowd, he'll transition to a walking state. As you recall, I removed the crowd just to simplify the scene as we're working on the first two stage points. Now the third stage point will need the crowd, so let's pull that back in. Let's go back up, and let's put this back into our crowdsource. So let's activate this. And I'm going to connect this back into the crowd source. So we have our uh, little crowd and our protagonist. Now let's play it. There's that jump. So this is where our main agent turns from a running into a walking state. So he can blend with the crowd instead of just plowing through right here. Okay, let's go back into the dot net. We'll need another crowd trigger. So let's drop that in. And we'll need another crowd transition. Now let's look at this crowd trigger. For the crowd trigger, we need the position of um, our little small crowd of people. And let's go back to, let's go back up and into the stage points. So the third stage point is what we're after. This over here. Now I'm going to have to go into it though, because I need the link. I need to link it to it. And I just wanted to show you where it is this stage point and this is what we're after that's what i'm going to feed into the crowd solver to trigger the third stage point so let's go back up let's go into the crowd dot net back to this crowd this time i'm going to be using the it, it will still be object distance but i'm going to use the point cloud i wanted to introduce another crowd trigger as well to as an, an, another example so what are we going to feed in okay let's choose this and this is the one that I'm going to use. So you can see that it accumulated a lot of points over here. Now I had scattered points over the circle. That's why they're all points. You can just put, um, feed in the actual dots of where it populate, where it instantiates all these agents. For example, where we had, oh, in the crowd going here. So we can actually feed this in. Let me remove the grid this in which is the points that instantiates the agent you can feed that in. i chose not to just because i wanted everything in one place i wanted the stage points here to be able to control the area of where all these stage points are now if you look carefully if i come here and i if i change the stage third stage point the crowd of people actually change with it like it goes with it just because if i go into the crowd again now i want to zoom in the small crowd being instantiated is actually driven by that stage point, that circle that I created it at the stage point. I mean, I can still feed this into the crowd solver, third crowd trigger, but I wanted everything to come from the stage point. I mean, this is just preference. You don't have to do this. This is just me being stubborn and wanting everything in one place. Okay, let's go back to the dot net. Uh, now we have the third stage. Let me turn off the points. Um, all right, so the distance is set pretty high. So it's set to 10 Houdini news. So that's pretty high. I want this. Um, let's just play it. Let's just play it to see what it does. Nothing. That's because that was my fault. Sorry. I had not set up the transition yet. Okay, so let's do that first. Do is have this guy come from this running, get close to the crowd, a small crowd of people, and turn into a walking state. So we're coming from a running state. So running into a walking state. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, he, he immediately goes into a walking state. And why is that? That was what I was trying to get at. Because this crowd trigger and its distance is set way too high. 10 Houdini units. So that's that's going all the way. This is where our crowd is. But the 10 Houdini units is detecting stuff all the way over here. Agent, when our protagonist agent is moving, right when he starts running, you know, he, he turns into a walking state because this the third crowd trigger already triggers first since it's 10 Houdini units. And the transition is saying running to walking. So it like this distance is too high. So what we need to do is put this to something really low till at least close. This is gonna take some trial and error. Now I've already did that to find that sweet spot. It's 0.75 for me, which worked out nicely. So let's replay. Run, run, run. 
he gets close. He get he starts shifting here, right when he gets into the crowd. And the reason why he, it's a little slow is because of that delay again. So we always have every crowd trigger and transition comes with the delay. So let's go here, and there's that um, delay right there. I mean, we can just make it smaller, but I kind of like that transition. Remember, if this delay is set to a smaller value. That's the speed or length of time it takes to transition from a running animation into a walking animation. So the smaller this number is, the faster you're going to turn from running to walking. You want that to be smooth. You want it to look realistic. Then this number can't be too small. What we can do, though, if we want it to look to transition into a walking state faster, is that we can modify this ramp. So it has a smoother transition at the same time. I'm going to use the B spline. So it has that smooth curve over here. And this just gives us a little more control. Like how much do you want the running to appear? So let's try this again. This is where it happens. Now you can play around with this to make it even more smoother because this looks instantaneous. It looks a bit better. It's still not great, but you can play around with this. Pull this all the way up. Let's try it one more time. Okay, yeah, that's a bit better, but I hope you see the point in how you can manipulate this ramp and the duration at the same time to get the effect that you want. In the next video, I'll finally create the last crowd trigger that will direct our small crowd of agents to walk away. The next video will involve a bit of Vex, and I'll demonstrate how we can use Vex in crowd triggers to access agent attributes like heading, agent name, and apply specific behaviors to selective agents like our main agent. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.